BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you ever received a call from someone claiming to be from the IRS, indicating you owe money, sometimes even being threatened to be put in jail if you will not pay? These scams come in many forms. If someone calls asking for money or personal information, hang up. If you think the caller might be telling the truth, call back to a number you know is genuine. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle your home and auto with Farmers and you could save up to 20%. 1 plus 1 equals 20. It's bundle math. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available in select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a three-year-old in Toronto. His name is Wolfgang, but everybody calls him Wolfie. Wolfie Reader. Hey, Wolfie. What a great name. Yeah. And I like the last name, too. Wolfie Reader. And he's obsessed with garbage trucks. Loves garbage trucks. He's three years old. And um, he only awesome. got to... Every Tuesday morning would be awesome for him in my neighborhood. Yeah. That's when the garbage guys come. Shout out to the garbage men. All right. There you go. Tuesday's, <laughs> Tuesday's my neighborhood, too. Nice. That's today. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Because I put the garbage out this morning. <laughs> good job, buddy. <laughs> Doing a great job. Wolfie. Thank you. Wolfie will be proud of you. He should be. Now, he had a birthday, but he only got to invite two people to his uh, party this month because, of course, social distancing. So who did he choose to have come to his birthday? The two trash collectors who handle his route. That's awesome. That is, he's like, here's who I want to come to my birthday, those dudes. And they were really very, like, impressed by the fact that they were picked. So they went above and beyond for him. They were like, okay, dude, you picked us for your birthday. We're going to make this awesome. I mean, that's got to be an ultimate, like, moment of flattery. Like, you know, it's a thankless job in a sense. Like, well, a lot of jobs are. And, you know, you're just doing your thing and no one's really appreciating or respecting you. And especially in garbage truck drivers, people get annoyed with them because they're stuck behind them or something stupid like that. And then all of a sudden you find out a kid looks up to you. Yeah. Like, that's got to make your whole year. And so they brought four trucks to his house and blared the horns and everything for him, which I think even as an adult, you know, getting to hear the horns is pretty cool. I bet there's one miserable neighbor that complained about it. Hey, I don't live there. <laughs> What's going on? Why is, it's not even our garbage day. I don't understand. There's four garbage trucks outside. Check the next door app. You'll find them. I That's cannot, true. Uh, confirm or deny that that would be me. <laughs> uh, they did hang out in his front yard. They gave him his own uniform, which uh, we got a picture up there, man. It is. Uh, it, you got to check it out. Plus, there's a, a great video. And uh, here they are all talking about Wolfie and his special birthday. We took a liking to him, and he took a liking to us. Wolfie's a really great kid. Without hesitation, he said, you're in DJ. Since you're part of the pack, we got you something. You can play movie with my garbage trucks. Help the family, give the kids something to do during this lockdown, and bring out the good spirits in times like this. Seeing him enthusiastic about even just something as simple as, you know, as what we do in our everyday lives brings meaning, you know, shows the importance of everything that everyone does in society. I love Drew's accent, by the way. Drew is awesome. And I love everything about this story, man. Yeah. It's so badass. And the kids, the, the kids. If you didn't catch it, he's like, "You can play with my garbage trucks." He has a bunch of garbage trucks. Yeah, those say, man, that's fantastic. Aww. All different types too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to tell you, it really brings it warms my heart because uh, Joey D's when he was young was obsessed with um, backhoes and things of that nature and and, and all sorts of uh, construction vehicles, which is why he goes to Vegas so often. <laughs> Different type of hose, but he's <laughs> and he was like, "Never stop loving him." He was like Wolfie. He couldn't get enough, wanted the trucks growing up, all of that stuff. He just loved dump trucks and all the big vehicles that just did construction. That's so cool. It's yeah. Steve, you joke about Vegas, but I mean, I still love those big construction vehicles. And I went down to Vegas because they have a thing where, obviously, you can just spend money and you get to drive them around. And they kind of 
half-ass show you how to use them, but you're just picking stuff up, picking up dirt, picking up <laughs> basketball hoops or basketballs. It's it was so much fun. Yeah, I think I I I bet it would be because I see people out there and I go, man, it'd be kind of cool to run one of those, but I don't want to break anything. And I forgot that Vegas has that place. Oh yeah, they have all sorts of weird experiential things in Vegas. Yeah, that's so bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> if you want it, they'll give it to you in Vegas. <laughs> That should Is be that their the tag. Yeah, that that should be. Yeah. <laughs> and they should have you read it just the way you just, yeah. if you want it, they'll give it to you. Vegas, if you want it, they'll give it to you. Yeah, Whoa. that's a good one. Well, I mean, I, I just love like, the, the whole idea of all this because how happy are the parents that, oh, man, I'm glad my kid doesn't like something where it would be unreasonable. Like, I grew up loving astronauts. No way. And then, hell, a group of astronauts are showing up to my house to say, what's up, Steve? Would you like to play with our rocket ship? If they well, did, my parents <laughs> might need to call the cops. Yeah. Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, you know? Be, yeah, that would be very disturbing. If I'm the parents, I'm like, yes, I'm so glad that like it's like something that could actually be done. And, and not that they set it up. You know, or they did. I just think that's pretty cool. It's very, very cool. And, and and the garbage guys really seem to be very, very happy about it, too. Like, it was a win-win for everybody. I even read, read the chicken man who's a garbage truck driver. He just texts in and goes, it's an amazing feeling, you know, when kids look up to you. And then he dresses up as Santa Claus during the Christmas season. So he's Santa, the garbage truck guy. Oh, that's awfully He's nice. always on the news for look that. It's him. so awesome. Oh, see, the world and garbage, we all can come together. He needs to go wherever this kid is for Christmas time. That will blow that kid's mind. Santa's now driving a garbage truck. Just when you thought garbage trucks were cool, yeah, they got cooler. Now here comes Santa on a garbage truck. All right, Red, you know where to go. It's Toronto. You better get going, buddy. Got look. <laughs> I think you can get there by Christmas if you leave now. So it says, I'm a garbage man in Edmonton. No one respects us. Unbagged trash from every customer. Bunch of crap engulfs us every time. Uh, I want to pull them out of bed and force them to breathe the crap that they make us. And during a pandemic, bunch of careless people. Whoa. We need that kid to go to admin to let people understand what's up. Yeah. Or for that matter, man, uh, we, we should let that guy be the face of Garbage Man because he's not happy. Imagine if he was the one he had to be at the kid's party. I don't know. He, he might not have been in a good mood about it. Another kid, person. I'm happy about it. But let me tell you about it. Your parents don't care about me. When I texted when I was a kid, I was obsessed with backhoes and tractors, too. Here I am, 32 years old, running an uh, excavator every day at work. I absolutely love my job. Nice. Aww. See, that is the dream you can accomplish. Because it's not easy to be an astronaut. You know, no, I mean, I'm watching away. It looks very difficult. Yeah. I, I, if, I mean, hard on the family, tough yeah. on your body. I hadn't thought about the hard on the family thing. Plus, you can't trust your fellow astronauts. See? So you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, Hillary, it, it, I think it takes somebody like Hillary Swank to really be an astronaut. True. Yeah. I mean, she went from being a boxer to now being an astronaut. Well, you know I what? Boxing didn't go too well for yeah. her. I know. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> Shows how hard boxing is. Yeah. Oh, boxing's very hard. She can hard. handle being an astronaut, but not being a boxer. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> listen, yeah, you're not cut out for every job. So here's a question for you. Why would a man bite off part of his friend's ear? Steve's going to tell you why. He's got the Mix Report for you at 617 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a farmer's home policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers rated policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well, then you must not be listening to BJ and Migs. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report. Well, thank you, guys, and thanks to Mercedes-Benz of Seattle for giving us the Migs Report. And how about for today? I'm going to play the audio clip, and you have to guess what today's special day is. All right. All right.
Well, this right. could be a couple of different things. Well, it's only one. All right. What I'm, do you think it is? I'm going to say it's uh, Leonard Nimoy's birthday. Wrong. Ah, nope. dang it. Ah, uh, Vicky. International Hobbit Day? Oh, you're so close. Oh. But wrong. Rev. Uh, National Hobbit Day? Bing, bing, Boom. bing. Yeah. You got screwed, wow. Vicky. Especially Only in America do we celebrate this day. Uh, Which isn't it British? I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. I don't know. Uh, That's good. Wow. He's the greatest little hobbit of I think all. we're the only radio station in the world that actually has that song and plays it. Why do you like that song, Steve? It's amazing. I don't know. I just have it in my box. So I wanted. I was like, God, I have an opportunity to finally play it. <laughs> that's yeah. That's I don't know why you put it in I there. I have no idea. I know Rev loves it, and I don't understand. Dude, if I went through this box, it'd be lots of questions of like, why do you have this? Why do you have that? Like this. You want to know where the beef is? It's right here. Oh, I know why you have that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's it. That's one of the we'll fine members of Kiss. This I don't. I don't know why that. Oh, okay. I wish you was <laughs> oh yeah, you need that in your box. Just, there you go. Yeah, you really like uh, one yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to have Giggly Lady. That's right. You yeah. wish you had a vagina, and that's why you're so angry. Oh, I forgot about oh, that I one. Her. Oh, that's, I remember her. You Good need to memory. let go of your anger and come to the realization that you're a homosexual. That was that lady talking to you. Wow. How about that? And how about the fact that, um, boy, she really would not fly today. You know what I mean? As far as some, the way she want to insult people. Just a- the BJ Ball Gag. <laughs> <laughs> now shut up, BJ. We need to use that one more. Wow. (laughs) Was that, oh, that was designed to let someone else get a word in edgewise. I think so. Yeah. Man, sometimes you just got gold in here. You don't even realize it. The BJ Ball Gag. Now shut up, BJ. (laughs) Forgot the big boy voice did that. I might need to hotkey that one. All right. (laughs) I can remember it. Yeah, do it, buddy. All right. Let's talk about this British guy. He was uh, denied an alcoholic drink on a flight. Because, well, he was too drunk. So he went on a rampage, and what did it lead to? Him biting off part of his friend's ear. Okay, that's not what you do. I guess he was 29, well, he is 29 years old, and he apparently tried to open up a fridge that had a bunch of booze in it and then swiped a drink from another one of the passengers on the flight. Oh. He's like, you're not going to give me a drink? Oh, I'm taking Johnny's over here in seat F. Okay. Well, anyways, the authorities got involved, and uh, a fight broke out in the cabin. Uh, and at one point, yeah, he was biting off part of the guy's right ear. And uh, the injured passenger, who is described as a drunken friend's, a drunken suspect's friend, had to be taken to the hospital. Okay, I mean, and this That's is friendship, right there. This is your buddy. Yes. Boy, I would be done with that guy. I mean, I hope this is it. I hope this is the end of all of it. I might be done with this guy. He's a Louisiana man by the name of Justin. He's 24 years old, and he was arrested uh, they for some kind of a matter where they noticed that he had a bunch of guns in his house. So then they also did a strip search of the guy, and you will not believe what they found. Okay. A loaded gun. A no. Bag. He had a loaded gun up in the wallet? In the no-go area. What? Wow. wow. Yes. What? Yes, he did. Okay. That is not gun safety, sir. Well, and if you were curious, the pistol's more than four inches long with a two and a half inch barrel. Now, do you think it was Just up in there? Case you needed to picture it. Yeah, do you think it was up there because he was really, you know, he thought maybe he might be in a fight and they might take all his guns? Or does he find that to be a fun activity? Or was it some weird game of Russian roulette? Oh, wow. Yeah, you're talking uh, <laughs> brown eye roulette? I okay. don't know. I don't even know where you go with that one other than the Seahawks. Right. Unfortunately, have some bad news about, you know, fresh off of their big win against the Patriots on uh, Sunday Night Football. Sadly, a couple of players will be done for the season, one of them being Bruce Irvin. Really bummed about oh, that. Oh, damn. It's pretty awesome to have him back with the team. I know he was very excited to be back with the team. And, and they thought originally his injury was just a sprained knee, which still sucks. But, you know, you would think, okay, he could be back in a couple of weeks. Well, it turns out it was an ACL tear, and he's going to be done for the season. Also done for the season, Marquise Blair as well, for the same reason, an ACL tear. Oh, so that's just God. A well, see, this couple of Seahawks the- added to the list of injuries uh, that seem to plague the NFL in game in, in game two for a lot of teams, especially the, the 49ers got hit bad with injuries as well. Oh, man, dude. this I mean, this is the tough part of football is that the teams that can stay healthy, it's not necessarily about talent anymore. Well, uh, also the teams that can keep their masks on their face because Pete Carroll just got fined $100,000 because he wasn't wearing his uh, mask on the sidelines. Because the, the, the NFL put out a thing saying, look, coaches, we're noticing after game one, 
a lot of you aren't wearing your mask or you're pulling them down. You're not keeping them on. You're violating the rules that we set forth. And if you continue to do it, you'll, you will be fine. So if Pete would have just wore his mask upside down like Bill Belichick, he yeah. would have been fine. But because he didn't, he was fined. Uh, also, Denver's Vic Fangio and San Francisco's Kyle Shanahan, all of them fined. Apparently, the NFL collected about a million dollars in fines for people not wearing masks on the sidelines. That's, well, listen, they, 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 they got to get their money somehow. Here's the funny part. So they announced all these fines yesterday. Last night was Monday Night Football. If you watched Monday Night Football, both the coach for the Saints, uh, Sean Payton, and the coach for the Raiders, uh, John Gruden, neither one of them were wearing their masks. That's another $200,000, oh, baby. A couple hundred thousand dollars more in the pocket of the NFL. Speaking of that game, the, the Las Vegas Raiders, their big first game in Las Vegas for last night's Monday Night Football. The Killers played at halftime, which was pretty cool. Uh, but unfortunately, nobody was there to enjoy it, even though oh. I'm sure a lot of fans would have been happy to see them beat the New Orleans Saints. At the end of the game, they had uh, Daniel Carlson come out, do a 54-yard field goal to secure the game as they won 34-24. to Here's the final call, which at the end, it's one of those like wah, 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 wah moments. From 54, trying to put this game away. Ooh, Daniel Carlson, the leg and plenty of it. Listen to the crowd that's not actually here in Las Vegas. <laughs> that's a great line. <laughs> Listen to the crowd that's not really here. So the Raiders won. Raiders won. They're two and zero. Oh. How about though? Like the Killers played at halftime. They played them like on top of like one with the skyline of Las Vegas. It was kind of weird though because you, you could see like there's nobody out in Vegas. Yeah. Like it's just a different time. I mean, I know some people are going to Vegas, but it's not like what it was. Yeah. But in Vegas, you'll get it there. Well, that's very interesting because I mean, I, I, you know, I thought the Saints were. I mean, I don't know. I thought the Saints were a pretty decent team, but the, maybe the Raiders were a really good team. Maybe the Saints aren't that good. One one place that did have fans was Indianapolis, and and how about during the game, uh, linebacker Darius Leonard? He jumped into the crowd, and then he gave a glove to a kid after the game because a lot of players will do that. They'll give you like, here's a cool piece of memorabilia from the game, right? Where was this now? Uh, in Indianapolis. Okay. Well, he gives the guy his glove. Then finds out later on, he's like, where's my wedding ring? Turns out when he handed the glove over to this kid, the wedding ring that he was wearing was still inside of the glove. Whoa. Fortunately, the kid and his family put it up on Twitter saying, hey, can somebody get a hold of Darius Leonard? We have his wedding ring. You're wearing your wedding ring while playing football? Wow. I can see that. If you have a glove on, you probably just want to keep it on. Yeah. I play hockey. Well, I used to. And I heard a couple stories of people like catching a puck to their hand as a goalie and it shattered the ring and like damaged their finger and I'm like eh, I don't want to take that chance yeah. but now I wear a rubber ring so I don't give a crap well that's what I was thinking your ring bucks. yeah your ring is not worth that much the, the one that you wear is your sort of proxy ring right but my actual one I went, back when I was wearing that one yeah like the nice one I was like I don't want to risk that uh, yeah that's why I'm very surprised that the players do that I mean because you know they, their rings are probably not cheap what a nice consolation prize for the, for the that's awesome if you open that up do you think it's yours I'd be like wow thanks buddy thanks man off to the pawn shop yeah, exactly. I know exactly where it is. It's right over there. I got to imagine the kid's going to get hooked up with even more stuff now. I hope so. That would be fun for the kid because they were honest about it. Yeah. Uh, NHL Stanley Cup Finals last night. Uh, Dallas was uh, mounting a big comeback, but not enough time left in the game because they ended up losing 3-2 to two to the Tampa Bay Lightning. That series is now tied at one game apiece. A big win for the Mariners, 6-1 to one against the Houston Astros. Oh, here we go. That's right. We're now three games out of second place, BJ. Yeah, we are. They play again tonight. As far as weather, 72 degrees. It's going to be cloudy today. Thanks to Kia of Pure for giving us the Mings Report, and that's what's up. So, uh, it was the season premiere of Ellen's uh, uh, show, you know, yes. and uh, of course, uh, there were a lot of allegations about a bad workplace environment, harassment, all sorts of stuff, and you, people were wondering, hey, is Ellen going to say anything about this? And in fact, uh, during her monologue, she did. As you may have heard, this summer there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show, and then there was an investigation. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. I take that very seriously, and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. This is the Ellen DeGeneres Show. I am Ellen DeGeneres. We have had a lot of conversations over the last few weeks about the show, our workplace, and what we want for the future. We have made the necessary changes, and today we are starting a new chapter. Now, that is, uh, if you go to BuzzFeed, I read an article because uh, on, that cut we have is part of her monologue. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she, she started it off making jokes about, hey, how was your summer? Mine wasn't so good. Uh, and yeah, I saw like a bunch of the employees, past and present employees were like, yeah, you know, 
there's sexual allega- assault allegations or harassment, sexual harassment allegations, racism, other things. I don't know if you want to joke about it. Exactly. So that that cut doesn't reflect that. But you're right. Her employees were not happy about that. Um, Ellen also said she is the nice person you see on TV, but she also has days when she's sad, mad, frustrated and impatient. There were also articles in the press and on social media that said that I am not who I appear to be on TV because I became known as the be kind lady. The truth is, I am that person that you see on TV. I am also a lot of other things. I Sometimes I get sad. I get mad. I, I get anxious. I get frustrated. I get impatient. And I am working on all of that. I am a work in progress. And I am especially working on the impatience thing because... And it's not going well because it's not happening fast enough. I will tell you that. (laughs) Yeah, even that is like, I just don't think you make jokes. I just, Mm. I don't think you can make jokes about these serious, serious issues that, you know, that not just affect her workplace, but workplace harassment, toxic environments. This is a thing that a lot of Americans have, are, are going through, and she's a boss. I just don't think, I know it's a comedy show, but I think you just don't make jokes about this whole subject at all. You can then go on and make jokes about other things, but the fact that you're making a joke about yourself where you are part, maybe, are part of that toxic environment, that's why I don't think you can make jokes. If it was, mm-hmm. you know... Uh, I'm torn on that. I can see what you're saying. I, it's like almost like, then don't address it at all. Like, address it amongst your, your staff. Make, make a statement. But if your show is meant to be entertaining for people, I don't know, I'm not going to go to her, go on to her show and I just want to watch her cry on the show. You know what I mean? Like, maybe this is something that was just meant to be talked about with your staff and with uh, a, a public statement somewhere or some way, shape, or form. But... I mean, you go to the Ellen show to watch her show to be entertained, and then all of a sudden, like, she's probably in a weird spot. Like, she's got to address it. She's trying to make fun of herself in the process, and I understand that it's probably, there's that fine line of upsetting some people, but, I mean, she's trying to entertain, too. Yeah, I, it, you know, Steve, it is a tough one. It is, it's because there are people that are going to think like you, and there are going to be people that just are going to be pissed at because she's the person. So I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a win there. I don't know if there's anything she could There's no done. winning, I don't think. Yeah. I, I, However she handles it, someone's going to say it's not good enough. Yeah, I almost wonder if she should have made a statement outside of the show altogether. Like, didn't even do it, do it on the show, but right. come up and do a statement. And may I make a news, maybe a news conference, something, and then not have the show be part of it. Therefore, she can be entertaining on the show, and yet she's not going to piss anybody off because a news conference would just be regular, a normal, hey, here's what's up. I think like it just in everything. Like, you know, people like will even be guilty of it. Like, we'll joke about, like, you know, not COVID, but like, you know, wearing a mask or doing this or that and the other thing. Even telling the Latin during the sports, you know, poking fun at the fact that, like, you know, you have a bunch of coaches getting fined, and then the two coaches last night are not wearing masks. But there could be somebody that's like, well, that's not sensitive to people that maybe have lost loved ones because of this coronavirus. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, we're not poking fun of people that have of tragedy. We're just trying to cope with just the weirdness that this world is in. And I could understand, like, maybe that's how she's feeling, too. It's like, I'm not making fun of the people that dealt with the crap that is like a sexual harassment charge or along those lines. But I'm also doing a show. I'm being self-deprecating about myself and what happened. I mean, where's... Uh, at what point are we uh, just going to be so angry at people because they're just trying to, like, you know, have a little, you know, levity in a serious situation? Yeah. I, the only thing I would say, Steve, is that we're not the ones doing the, you know, we're not the ones not wearing the masks. She's really the one is at the heart of this thing. Like, she is her. That's the problem is that it's her that's a part of this alleged environment. And that's where I think people might get mad at her going, you can't joke about something that you may be the cause of. As opposed to where we're just joking around. We're not the ones that didn't tell them to wear masks. We're not the ones spreading COVID. You know, well, I mean, we don't know what Danny does in Bremerton when he's on his skateboard. Wow, I wear my mask, okay? Yeah, do you? Yes. All right. I think Steve's got a point there. It's time to, I think it's starting. Yeah, it feels like there's no winning in it. I, all I don't think about, and I grant it's a whole different situation, but I still remember that moment when um, <laughs> Pee Wee Herman showed up on the MTV Video Music Awards. <laughs> I know this is such a <laughs> wow a long time ago. So for those that are like don't know the whole story, Pee Wee Herman was like the biggest children's star at the time. Like and adults, like adults loved them, children loved them. His yeah. children's show was like fun for stoners and fun for kids, like most children's shows. And he was on top of the world, and then he got busted for cranking it in an adult theater. Yeah. And that just completely killed his career. So, like, all of a sudden, everything was, like, shut down. Like, oh, my gosh, how can this children's show host do something so awful, like, 
yeah. have fun in an adult theater while, you know, whatever. So what, like months go by where no one hears from Pee Wee Herman or Paul Rubens. He shows up on the MTV Video Music Awards in the opening, like, skit and just comes out and just all he says was, heard any good jokes lately? And it was just the way he delivered it because he was in the Pee Wee outfit. It was like a moment of levity to like what was like a really crappy situation for him. Yeah. And, I mean, like there was a lot of people very upset with him. How could that person, He, he you know, he's a, an example for the children and he's doing this. Like people hated him. I thought that was so lame that people hated him. But they did. And yeah. I, I remember being younger and being a kid watching that moment. And it was just like, it just made like, oh man, like a weight off your shoulders. Like this is so awkward, but that was so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know the proper way to go about these kind of things. And we'll see how it goes. It seems like the audience didn't mind, you know. And I think at the end of the day, Steve, I think more. Well, she gave them all a little like squeezy balls. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, and danced with them. Yeah, I think people want to be entertained, and so hey, it's not. You know what? It, you didn't. You didn't come to my office and make it horrible. All you do is make me laugh every day, so I'm happy. I think that's at the end of the day. I think she's going to end up being okay. What if she said, "Yeah, I was the be kind person." She's like, "Not anymore," and then she just becomes like it's like Ellen, the oh, raging bitch. I'd love that. I might start watching the show. A whole new show. I would watch that show. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Oh. Who used to be the overweight one on Friends? Oh, uh, Phoebe. No! Oh. Marcel. No. no. Marcel, Marcel the monkey? Yeah, his yeah. body fat index was pretty bad. Oh, that uh, poor guy. He was considered fat for a monkey. Uh, you know what? You shouldn't be body shaming Marcel, okay? Marcel was probably the most talented one on that show. Let's be honest. Oh, nothing out of you, Vicky, at all? She's not even paying attention. She's going to punch you when you go to a break, though. Oh, that's going to happen, yeah. Sells her show. I know, her hallowed show. Uh, the correct answer, by the way, is Monica. You want a shot at beating Steve, you got a 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I can't afford to pay my bills, how am I going to afford attorneys and bankruptcy fees? You know, one of the things people ask me all the time as a bankruptcy lawyer is that how am I going to pay all these fees and costs because I'm here because I can't afford to pay my bills. And, I, of course, we understand that. I mean, being, being in, in the bankruptcy field... Uh, but you know, one of the things to remember is is that if you decide once you make the decision to file bankruptcy, you can stop paying on all of the creditors that are going to be included in the bankruptcy, and those are the funds that you can use that you have been paying your creditors to pay your your attorney fees and court costs to get your case filed. And once your case is filed, you're not going to have most of those payments anymore. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.